Hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Um, <clears throat> my last video, I showed you my multitasking box fan. Um, but I didn't really get into how I built it uh, too much. So today I'm going to show you here all the little things about it. We're going to break it down and let you take a look at it. So you, if you decide you want to make something similar, you'll be able to see some of the things I did to make it much easier for you to build your own or to take part of the ideas I have here to build something else more unique to your needs. So anyway, so let's take it apart here real quick. It's nothing more, there's three major components to it. The box fan itself, which is just a 20 by 20 box fan. You could technically use any fan you really wanted to to do this. The box fan is easy for this particular style of what I'm doing here, so that's why I went with it on this particular one. So I have this 20 inch by 20 inch box fan that you can get anywhere. It also has the filter box, which houses the two filters in it, and it attaches to the back of the box fan uh, with screws. And then the other component is the actual pedestal itself, which um, is what holds this thing up and also holds it when you want to mount it to the ceiling. So let me take this apart real quick here. First thing we're going to do is let's just take these knobs off and let's take this thing out of here. And we'll see where this goes. Come on. So the knobs have the bolt, the stud on it. Instead of the stud being on the box fan. And there it is, the box fan itself. So, we'll leave this up here for the moment and let's turn our attention to the box fan area. So the first thing I want to do is, let's take this front cover off. So I got my screw gun here. I put a little, little magnet on there. That's just to help me from, keep me from losing these screws as I take them out. And we're going to take... We're going to take the face cover off of the fan. The magnet really helps to hold these little tiny screws so that you don't lose them. So now we have the cover off. I'm going to take this off, but it isn't necessary. To well, let's leave it on. So now the next thing you do is I want to separate the box fan from this and then we'll go over all the different components. So. I have screws on the inside here that screw to the lip on the back side and screw directly into the faceplate of the filter box. So we're going to take those off. And again, there's six of them here. And they're just little short screws, nothing major. I basically used the same six holes that we used to put the cover on here. And the back cover, I've removed it permanently so that I can actually set this other, set these two pieces flat to each other. So, okay. So as you can see, I have a couple of knobs that I used to go into the faceplate. And I could have made these instead. I had them. I bought them years ago. I decided now's as good a time as any to use them. So uh, those are the 
uh, some of the hardware that you need. So now I'm gonna take the fan off and let's go over the fan real quick. The only modifications I did to that is I took the back cover off and we don't use that at all. That way this surface here will make to our box, our filter box. And the other modification I made is I made two plates, one on each side, and this center hole is exactly centered from top to bottom on the fan. Now these are just three quarter inch plywood and I got four screws that I just screwed it directly into here. And they stick into here, they're not too long so they don't hit the fan when the fan is turning. And if I took these four screws off, this would come right off. There's a, uh, a speed nut on, on the back side of this, a T, uh, a T nut, and I use quarter inch, 20, uh, 20 TPI, thread it uh, for my knobs, and so that's what this T nut is. And I did put a piece of sandpaper and I glued it to this surface here. So this has sandpaper on it glued on there. And the reason that is, is that when it sets into the pedestal itself and it pivots on here, I don't have to super tighten it to get it to not move. It takes very little tightening. And by having the sandpaper on there, it really makes it much easier to loosen and tighten it without having to over tighten it all the time. So, and that's really all the modifications to the fan itself. Now, let's turn our attention to the pedestal here for just a second. So let's pull this pedestal down off of here and it just slides out like so. And this is the actual pedestal right here. And the pedestal really isn't anything more than a, a football goal post really. And so I put a single pedestal, round pedestal on it so that it slides into the slot easier. You could make this any way you want, but that's why I went with a round pedestal. Uh, I used the base, and this base is, it's 21 inches from the center here out to this edge. And so this overall, it's 18 inches 16 inches that way. So uh, it's not quite exactly an equilateral triangle. This is this is 18 inches across here, but it's only 16 inches from here to here and here to here. Um, it's arbitrary what size you want to make it. Uh, if the bigger you make it, the more room you need on your ceiling for it to for it to work up at the top on your ceiling. So. Um, but basically, after you build your triangular base, and I drilled these holes just to lighten the, lighten the load of this thing. Um, and then I just made a three boards here to make my total configuration. Calculated where this hole is based on where the center of that hole is to keep this high enough to be able to have it turn on here, on my pedestal. And so now, this thing, it's a pretty simple, that's probably one of the easiest things there are to, to make for this whole project is some kind of pedestal. Now I could have probably made a pedestal with that telescope so you could adjust the height, but I didn't see any need for much of that. I just wanted it to hang here most of the time as we discussed in my other video. Uh, but e light enough and easy enough for me to take it down and set it wherever I want to use it if I want it close to where I'm working somewhere. So now that's the pedestal. And again, it's pretty straightforward. So let's talk about the third piece here. And of all three, this is probably the most uh, detail oriented piece that we have. Basically, it has the two filters go in here. Let's take one of these off. And I just put two stop blocks on it. Nothing fancy. And they're here just to hold my two air filters in here. 
So I have a regular 20 by 20 filter and a 20 by 20 pre-filter. Like I said, this goes in front of it. So all the air goes through here and through the regular filter and then through the fan blade. And of course, the side with the grid on it faces toward the airflow so that the paper doesn't bulge as much by having that there because that's the way the air will flow. And that's all there is, is just two filters. Uh, you can do it with one filter if you want. You can put any kind of filter in there you want. I use the 20 by 20 on a lot of different things. And so that's why I kind of stuck with that thing for this. So let's talk about this frame itself now. This frame very simply is two, pull that part, is two face frames is all it is. And I hinged it on the bottom side here with three light duty hinges. Now I could have made these hinges stick hinges. You've seen a video on that. And I thought about doing that, but I didn't. And the main reason why not is because I have these hinges. I wanted to get this done, so I just went ahead and went with these. Um, this is the main component and the most complex component of the three pieces to make. But you can make this any way you want without any problem. And you can make it any size um, following the principle. But I found this to be the easiest way to make this so that it could function the way I wanted it to function. So basically, it's a four-sided box here and two face frames here and here. And these two are exactly the same size and they fold up to each other. And then in order for this thing to slide, I put this thing together. Let me pop this back in the hole. Now the hole on this, the hole on this, what I did was after I, when I went to put the hinges on it, let's do this real quick. When I went to put these hinges on there, I laid it down nice and flat. The two frames, I didn't have this on there yet. So I put the two frames together and then I put a spacer at this side to hold this side up just a hair and I clamped it on the bottom side where the hinges are gonna go. Then I made sure the hinges were pulled tight in each direction as I put it on there, attached it to the one frame and then I pulled it as tight as I could and attached it to the other frame using crazy glue then I put the four screws in on each of them and then I put crazy glue around them and that helps hold the, them completely in place and I don't think I have to worry about them coming apart. So basically it's just these two face frames. The other thing I did was then I came back and I took four pieces of, of wood, two inches thick. And the reason that's two inches thick is because I have the two filters that go in here and when you stack them together they come out to just right at one and seven eighths inches so that makes it easy for me to put these in and out to change them or clean them as needed um, so and as far as the locking mechanism what I did is after they were put together I clamped this side together and held it with a clamp and I drilled a hole the size of this rod which is uh, I think it's quarter inch rod but it might be three eighths actually and it's just a steel rod just needed something for the lock nut the lock bolt set screw I wanted something that would lock against it so after I drilled the hole and put this in here and it, probably if you went at a slightly upward angle it makes it a little easier, but I didn't want this thing. I want this thing to work freely here, but as I pull it out, it starts getting snugger because it's trying to bend this thing down. That way it holds it together and I don't really necessarily have to lock this down. Now, you could curve this piece or do whatever you want, but I just use a straight piece and I made this secondary hole here after I drilled the first one and I pounded it in place and I put a set screw in. And then I came back and I oversized this hole enough to be able to pull it apart and be able to pull it back together. Now, one last thing, as far as the set screw, 
that was pretty simple too. And that's just an insert there, and this is just another knob with a bolt. And it's cut to the size, to the length that I need, so that when it's all the way down, it pretty much pushes against that rod to hold it against the bottom. And that's all that's all this lock screw is. It's just an insert, a little insert put in right here, directly above this hole, and then this set screw goes down in there. So this is the whole thing in a nutshell. It's not that hard. Let me put this back in. Hard to do when you don't see it. There you go. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. It's really easy to make. This is like 21 and a half by 21 and a half. Well, actually, I think it's 21 and a half inside here because those are 20 inches. And these frames are like 22, 22 and a half by 22 and a half, whatever that is, so that they fit the box fan itself nice and square. The only thing that's important when you make these face frames, you want to make sure that you make them the same. And I just put them together with glue and pocket hole screws to make these frames. And I made them identical so that they're good and flat is what's important. So when you set them together, they sit nice and flat to each other, nice and tight, because that's why you get your seal. Now I could come back here with a piece of foam and seal it that way if I wanted to, but I just don't think it's necessary. At this point, it seemed to do a pretty good job of filtering when I close it. So that's the whole thing. It's easy to make. This is the most complicated part, and hopefully I showed you exactly how I made this one. It just takes straight pieces of wood. Now that I had the prototype, I kind of like the stand. I think it looks okay. This box, that filter box, yeah, it's kind of ugly. <coughs> but now that I've made the prototype, and I've seen what I really like and don't like about this setup. There's only a couple of minor things about it. I probably will make these. I'm going to remake this eventually. And you can take this piece, make it out of some really nice wood. So that when you put it all together, it could be very attractive looking also. Without any problem. Um, if you really wanted to. And eventually, I'm going to remake this and that's probably what I will do. Now that I have all the pieces, I know exactly how to build it. I can find the right wood and make something that looks really nice for a box fan. So, anyway, I got to prevent rambling. I think you saw everything I have, how I made it. If you have any questions about how to make it or any suggestions on how to improve it maybe slightly, leave them in the comments. I'm always interested in hearing new ideas. Uh, if you learned something here, or you like this video hit that like button but most importantly though please come back again because i'm nowhere near done so i will see you later i gotta put this thing back together you don't need to watch that it's pretty straightforward so thanks and you come back again soon okay